Alright guys, hope you're all well, hope you're keeping safe. Today's state of the game was a really big one actually, because those spoilers going around, they've been confirmed by the devs, which has me very excited. We learned a little bit more about what's coming with PTS Phase 2, including the removal of purple gear from crates above challenging difficulty in missions. If you enjoyed this recap, please drop a like below. You can support me outside of YouTube on Patreon if you wish, and with that said, let's begin. Alright guys, as usual, got my notes here. Same same kind of formula as always. I'm just going to go through the notes here and, and get right to it. So today we had Hamish, Bruce and Yannick. Uh, Hamish started off with the priority alert. So we had the maintenance, I believe it was two days ago. It might have been yesterday. Um, there were, I believe, two fixes. Fix an issue that prevented players in a group from earning progress on global event challenges from their allies for some challenges. And fix an issue that caused the doors during Breakthrough the Black Tusk Forces to not open during the DARPA Research Lab main mission. They then went to talk about the Dark Hour Raid Delta issues uh, that they're currently trying to fix. They basically said that they require the exact error code, time it happened, where, where you're playing from, whether you're in a group, you're playing solo, whether it was match made. You know, the more information you can give about those the Delta errors, uh, the more the merrier, essentially. And they then went on to talk about the, you know, the main thing, which is the PTS currently going on, and then phase two of the PTS and some of the changes coming with that. So first off, Chris um, talked about the highlights and what he said was that it's really great to see how well received the new gear is. Uh, almost unanimously positive feedback. The Foundry Bulwark is broken and they intend to fix this for PTS Phase 2. And they said it's awesome to see people using the new talents, new exotics, weapons and everything else that's been added with uh, the first phase. They said Phase 1 is actually ending on Thursday at 1pm CEST, so that's tomorrow. Phase 2 will go live on Friday. They are closing it for 24 hours, which is not something they normally do, but for technical reasons, they wanted to do it this time just to make sure that Phase 2 is working as intended. And they said you won't need to re-download the PTS. You'll just need to obviously download the patch for Phase 2. They then went on to talk about more about the Foundry Bulwark. They I actually covered this in yesterday's uh, video. Like, basically, what they said is when you or your shield takes damage, it will repair 40% armor over 10 seconds. That's the, the talent. The counter to it is burst damage because, you know, the, the, the repair armor that you're getting is over time. In PvP, uh, it was a real big problem because in PvP, they modify the damage that you're doing to other players by 70% or 75%, but the repair effect of that gear set was taking the pre-modified damage. So it was basically taking the PvE damage. It meant you were actually healing 100%, and essentially you were unkillable. The fix was just to have the set work as intended. Um, so, you know, it, it takes the actual damage you're taking rather than uh, from that particular mode, whether it be PvP or PvE, instead of being in PvP and taking it, you know, from what's on the, the PvE side. Uh, they said on the PvE side with the gear set, the, attrib the attribute, the incoming repairs attribute on it was affecting the repair effect of that gear set, meaning you could get it up to 100%. Uh, it wasn't intended this way, and it made it way more powerful than it should be, and this is going to be fixed for Phase 2, and that's really good news. They then said about feedback on rifles. Uh, this is a question that Hamish uh, brought up. The M1A was obviously very powerful. It's currently powerful in the in the live game. And what they said is they wanted to tune the M1A and bring it down to normal levels of power, and they wanted to package that with a pass on all the weapons. And they are much happier with where the weapons are on the PTS, and believe the feedback has shown that. And I've seen that feedback on the forums myself, guys, and it looks as though people are generally much happier with where weapons are at the moment. SMGs and shotguns in particular received a significant uh, buff, along with ARs and many rifles that were unperforming as well. Uh, you know, everything went up, and now there should be more balanced weapons rather than the one outlier being the M1A. And we had a similar issue way back with the P416. The new brand set, Walker Harris, uh, they've had uh, feedback about this not being possibly not strong enough. Uh, basically, Chris said, mathematically speaking, it's strong. Uh, the one piece, not so much, the 5% weapon damage, but the two and the three piece, they have multiplicative damage increases, meaning they scale very well. Uh, very well. Whilst 5% damage to armor looks less than, say, something like 10% ass assault rifle damage, it's going to be stronger, uh, you know, when you're shooting at armor. Also, it has two named talents, new name talents that are very strong working with it as well. There's no plans to make changes for it for phase two. They're obviously still open to feedback on it, but mathematically speaking, 5% damage to armor is more powerful than, say, 10% weapon damage. It's not just a case of just putting that up to 10% because then it would become, you know, the meta. It would be by far the best uh, brand set for, for DPS, and that's not what they want. Uh, they've had reports of some people saying the PTS feels too easy, um, and what they said was 
And I think this was Yannick here. They said that with TU10, they want it to feel satisfying. They want you to feel more powerful and rewarded. And part of that was increasing the player power. Some parts of the game will become easier. Uh, and they want it to be that way. They want it to be fun for everyone. Therefore, heroic should still be hard if you're not optimized. But if you are optimized and you're finding it easy, then you should be playing legendary. What I will say to that is that maybe they need to add legendary to more missions to give people a wider spectrum of missions to play through on legendary. Um, but I'm not surprised to see that feedback at all. Uh, they feel like it's landed in a good spot to make it fun. Uh, and there's obviously this question around PC and console as well. Argument uh, that playing on PC is easier than playing on console. I've never played on PC, but from what I can tell, playing on PC is easier than playing on console. Uh, but they've seen people also saying the opposite, that it's still hard. So it's finding the balance and they believe it's kind of in the best place. TU10 should feel better because it's fixing all the frustrating things when it comes to difficulty. Question uh, come up of PvP time to kill. And Chris said, it's difficult to have gotten any objective feedback right now from uh, phase one or any strong feedback uh, about it at all because most people have just been, you know, <laughs> clowning on each other with Foundry Bulwark. Uh, they hope more will come with uh, phase two to help them understand whether it's in a good place or not. And they also need more data on everything else within PvP like talents, gear sets and synergy and all that sort of stuff. Um, Hamish then brought up MMR changes for PvE and PvP. Are there any coming? Uh, basically, Bruce said, comparatively, the damage went up by 12.5% against other buffs. The new exotic sniper with a new headhunter talent means that sniper builds will be in a better place uh, with TU10. And then uh, Hamish put the question to Yannick, is there anything you want to add uh, about Phase 2? And Yannick said, there's a lot of changes coming with Phase 2. We're looking forward to the feedback on buffs for exotics. And I'll get to that, guys, because they did give some numbers on that. But there was some other stuff first. Question come up about more stash base. And they said when they increased it last time, they basically doubled it. And they did that so they never had to do it again, if that makes sense. They didn't want to do it incrementally. They just wanted to do a big one, double it, you've got your stash base. And they just basically said increasing it now, it's not going to be possible. And it's certainly not on the table right now. And I guess the question is, you know, there's always going to be some people that will always fill it. For me personally, I'm nowhere near that 300 at the moment. Um, but yeah. Then they had uh, words from Nikki. So Nikki wasn't actually on the stream, but they had some words from him about uh, some phase two changes. Uh, there's a couple here which are good to know. Uh, they've updated the spread of item power between minimum and maximum, and this will result in mostly fewer rolls at the minimum amount, which is great. They've increased the uh, minimum item power for all caches. Again, great. And all containers in missions now scale their regular and targeted loot with the difficulty. This results in no more purple gear on challenging or higher. Again, this is absolutely great. Personally, and I've said this before, I think they should have went, maybe went one step further and just have no purple gear at end game, regardless of level. But this is a step in the right direction. Oh, and also they've increased the minimum and maximum crafting results uh, with waiting added for a better spread between them. Again, this is good news. Uh, it's not going to be where you could just go to the crafting and get the best stuff you want. But it should be now that you have a chance, or at least a better chance of getting a, a good item rather than just really, really poor items. They want to talk about the new Guardians global event and show the rewards for the event. Might do a separate video on this one. To be honest, guys, it's probably my least favorite one for a few reasons. I'm, I'm still enjoying it, but it's probably my least favorite one. Uh, they wanted to clarify the season pass premium trap dynamic for season two. Uh, the season itself for season two is free for everyone who has Warlords of New York. But when you purchase the pass, you get the extra track of rewards with exclusive vanity items, skins, and other things like caches of gear, for example. So that they just wanted to clarify that. They then went on to address the spoilers and the leaks that have come out recently. Now, they said there is always going to be a risk uh, that when you take uh, or when you put out a PTS, that people are going to find things that you didn't manage to pull out before putting the PTS out. They did say the amount of stuff found on this PTS is beyond anything they imagined. Uh, it's their fault for not hiding the information. Um, so it's, you know, they know that. It's still a work in progress and it's still in development, so some things might change or there might be some new stuff. But basically what the, what, they, what they're saying is the stuff that's come out, uh, you know, these spoilers and leaks, they're basically confirmed at this point. So if you do not want to know anything about this stuff, then just please don't try and find it because you will find it very easily. I did a video on it myself. 
Um, and then they went on to address the skyscraper mode that came up in these leaks as well. And they confirmed that they are working on a new PvE game mode called Skyscraper. Um, and they said this should scratch the itch of a replayable PvE game mode. Uh, they said this will be nothing like Underground, um, just so people you know, have the right expectations. It will be a completely different and brand new experience, and it won't be coming for some time. But I've got to say, guys, for me, this is the biggest news, because this game mode sounds awesome, and I think this is what The Division 2 severely lacks. And It's a, it's a replayable PvE mode, uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to this. They then went on just to confirm some standout buffs with exotics. The Chameleon is getting an increase of 32.8% to its base damage. There's an 11.2% uh, base damage increase for the Bighorn with additional functionality. When scoped in and hitting headshots, you will actually increase your headshot damage. They said that most exotics have got a base weapon damage buff. The BTSU glove has got a buff. Depending on how many skill tiers you have, you get a large boost on skill haste for the Hive. Negotiator's di d uh, Dilemma, they're reducing the radius marked enemies can damage each other to 15 meters in PvP. And they will incorporate more visual feedback for Negotiator's di uh, Dilemma within PvP as well. Um, with Phase 1 of the PTS, they actually reduced the bleed damage in PvP by 75%. But with Phase 2, they're increasing the damage done by the actual Stinger Hive itself by 75%. They don't want you to take one hit and go down, which is what was happening prior to the nerf to bleed damage. But increasing the damage to the drones means that if you stay in the radius of the Stinger Hive, then it's going to punish you. And I think that's the right way of doing it. Question about changes to the Eagle Bearer or the Imperial Dynasty. In PvP for the Imperial Dynasty, it will no longer immediately ignite players. You will need to, uh, need to maintain line of sight for three seconds to apply burn. This means you can counterplay by breaking line of sight. The Eagle Bearer is getting a 7.8% damage increase, but nothing further. The weapon handling change uh, that was coming didn't make it into phase one of the PTS, but will be there as part of phase two. Stability, accuracy, reload speed, and weapon swap are basically all part of that weapon handling change. And it's on a one-to-one -one basis, meaning that if you get 1% weapon handling, that gives you 1% for each of these attributes. And they also said, lastly, it's clear now that there will likely be a phase three for the PTS. Phase one wasn't great for PVP due to uh, the foundry, which again is their bad, but that's not confirmed yet. They just said that it's likely gonna be coming. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Um, very excited, especially for this skyscraper mode. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below and until the next one. Epic out.